strong chemicals, sturdy brushes and uh, plenty of elbow grease. If that doesn't rid these uh, rangy rims of their baked on brake dust then I don't know what will. It's been quite some time since I've filmed any kind of wheels off action so thought this Range Rover Evoque with its problematic brake dust encrusted spokes would be the perfect excuse to get down and dirty on camera once again. The wheels had apparently been tackled previously but somewhere down the line brake dust infused chemical splatter had been left to bake onto them so thought for the sake of a video I'd get the wheels off and give them as well as the arches a good seeing to but with this being the wife's daily driver the aim wasn't to detail the wheel and arches to perfection but just to give them a good going over to hopefully rid them of most of their muck. After cracking the nuts, carefully jacking it up and securing its underside with some axle stands which was easier said than done, I whipped the first two wheels off to allow for closer inspection. Now for a daily driven 4 or 5 year old car, both the arches and wheels were pretty much as I expected them to be, caked in filth and begging for some attention which fingers crossed they would uh, receive in due course. The first port of call then was to plonk the first heavy wheel onto the top of a wash bucket on which a thick drying towel had been laid to be crudely pre-cleaned and pre-rinsed with a citrus degreaser dispensed via a pressure sprayer and some good old water which apparently I love to waste dispensed via a pressure washer. It was then onto a heavy wheel cleaner, in this case Bilberry from Valet Pro which was generously sprayed over the barrel before being worked in quite aggressively with a few different brushes I had nestled within my uh, wheel cleaning bucket of wonder positioned just off camera. So the wheel cleaner and heavy physical agitation probably shifted about 50% of what was left on the surface following the pre-clean but as you can see there was still a fair amount of stubborn spots and stains present especially on the backs of the spokes. So to try and address that stubborn stain and then I switched to a straight up bleeding fallout remover which I hoped would reactivate some of the splattered stains that were likely caused by the use of a similar product in the first place. After being applied and left to soak in for a few minutes then the wheels began to bleed heavily indicating an abundance of iron and metal based contamination that any other kind of product would have struggled to shift. As before all surfaces were then sufficiently agitated with wheel brushes which helped make the most of the potent product and take the clean to the next level.
Once brushed up, the fallout remover was then pressure rinsed off to prevent any damage being done before the surface was then re-inspected. A few FFSs were muttered and a tar remover was grabbed to take it to stage number four. Now, while not all of the remaining stubborn spots were affected by the tar remover, a fair few of them were, which I guess made its application somewhat worthwhile. After being left to soak for as long as it safely could be in the sun, the barrel was given a last once over with an old wash mitt and some shampoo to help neutralise the residue prior to a final rinse. But there's nothing more effective for instantly flattening your suds than a tar and adhesive remover, which is why when detarring the body I generally leave it until last. A heavy clay polish or even steam clean perhaps would have been the next logical step, but I still had the face to tend to as well of course as the other three wheels, four arches and the body of the Evoke, so I had no choice but to leave it at that for the barrel and flip the wheel to give the spoke some similar treatment. I decided to overlook the degreaser and wheel cleaner as the face wasn't as heavily caked in dirt and instead jumped to the bleeding fallout remover, which after being left to react for a few minutes was worked into and over the surface in a similar fashion to the barrels. Before once again being rinsed off to reveal a cleaner, brighter but still unfortunately stubbornly stained wheel face. One last ditch attempt to rid the wheels of their stubborn spots then saw me reach for the magic erasers which were gently worked over the problem areas and although it was more effective than the brushing, the amount of time and the number of sponges I would have gone through just to achieve a slightly better result wasn't justified in my opinion. Plus these things are abrasive and will dull a lacquered finish given enough rubbing so too much elbow grease here could have done more harm than good. Finally then, because I uh, felt bad for skipping the dedicated wheel cleaner earlier, I applied some to finish up and worked it into the inner nooks and crannies of the spokes with another handy wheel brush prior to rinsing off and grabbing my breath before wheel number two. So to try and break the monotony of watching me do exactly the same all over again then, I ditched the tripod for the GoPro which, while not being quite as good quality, still provides a unique point of view. Once again, the barrel of wheel number 2 was first pre-washed using the same citrus degreaser before being pressure rinsed. It was then battered with some, and when I say some, I mean an abundance of bleeding fallout remover and a few brushes to uh, cut through the lion's share of the soiling. Before being rinsed, detarred, re-fallout remover then magic erased which I didn't do for the rear of the first wheel but uh, wished I had as it was quite effective at quickly cutting through much of the stub and brake dust.
Once again, the wheel was then flipped and a similar procedure was undertaken for the face of it. Now, it was at this stage I was uh, starting to feel a bit disheartened as when you go to the trouble of jacking up a fairly big car like this and removing its wheels, you really want to be able to get a decent job done to make the time, effort and energy expended worth it. So when you realise that's probably not going to happen, it's difficult to stay motivated, especially when you know that it's essentially a freebie for the sake of a video. But knowing you lot would rather see something than nothing, I persevered until a certain standard of clean was achieved. Wheels out of the way then, it was onto the neglected wheel arches and because the initial cleaning had taken longer than I'd planned, I didn't uh, really have time to fully detail them but still wanted to complete a few stages while they were exposed as it doesn't make sense to tuck freshly cleaned wheels back inside filthy arches. They were first pre-cleaned with the same citrus degreaser and left to soak for a moment to break down and soften up any loose grime before being thoroughly rinsed out with the pressure washer. So once pre-rinsed, the arch was then splattered with a thick layer of snow foam and left to soak before being agitated with a brush. Now while snow foam itself won't do a whole lot of cleaning in a situation like this, the degreaser applied earlier should have shifted the bulk of the dirt and the foam just serves as a good all encompassing way to quickly get some product into all areas of the inner arch. Now you may prefer to do things the other way around but because I wasn't intending to go the whole hog here, a quick once over with the foam made sense. Lastly then, despite the fact there was still plenty of uh, tar spots present, the damp arch was heavily spritzed over with a water-based dressing to give the neglected plastics and arch components some depth and sheen, so that once the wheels were replaced and tyres dressed, any visible parts of them would at least look good at a glance. Now, being water-based, it's simply left to soak in and dry naturally instead of being buffed over with a towel which generally leaves a better finish anyway. The same process was of course then repeated on the pesky carpeted rear arches, although a slightly larger amount of degreaser was needed to fully saturate them. Adequately agitating the carpeted areas with a brush is important to help release dirt and vegetation from the fibres, but if you want a real contaminant free finish, I'd advise freaking the neighbours out by vacuuming them off once dry prior to protecting with an upholstery sealant of some sort to make them easier to blast off with a pressure washer in the future. Well that's a theme for another video, so a basic three stage spruce up here, including a subsequent quick dressing of the non carpeted parts would have to do. With the wheels still off the car then, it was onto a wash of the Range Rover's body as although a full contact clean may have been the last thing I really wanted to do at this point, you can't be putting clean wheels back on a dirty car. 
Before making any contact with the dusty body though, the lower parts were treated to a degrease before the entire car was then fully snow foamed and rinsed off to remove any loose dirt. It was then quickly but safely washed from top to bottom with a soft microfiber mitt to remove any remaining dirt the pre-clean hadn't, as well as any overspray and residue the surfaces may have collected from my previous wheel and arch cleaning endeavours. Once completely contact washed, the body of the Evoke was rinsed off one last time to rid it of all the dislodged dirt, chemical contamination, cleaning product residue and suds, before being dried off with a plush matching red microfiber towel. As time was marching on never ending, I gave the wheels one final signature spritz with a light detail spray and buff over with a towel for a final pick me up prior to refitting. After being tucked back into the freshly rejuvenated wheel arches I decided to dress the tyres while the wheels were still off the ground and as per usual used Car Pro Pearl which was applied quite heavily with a tough shine applicator sponge before being buffed over with an old microfiber towel to remove most of the excess shine. The axle stands were then pulled out and the Evoke was not so gently dropped back down before the nuts were talked up. Thankfully the now low lying sun helped to cast a nice light over the still somewhat stained wheels making them look okay from certain angles and while admittedly they really needed to be taken to the next stage realistically I just couldn't offer that within the confines of this shoot. I could have just binned the footage and pretended it never happened but that wouldn't be a true reflection of the nature of daily outdoor car cleaning. Plus I know I can't upload enough content to keep you happy so decided to edit it anyway in the hope you'd still appreciate the work that went into it regardless of outcome as there's always tips and useful info to be had if you keep your eyes and ears peeled. So, thanks for watching, it's been a while, hopefully you were either picked up some pointers or at the very least enjoyed watching me struggle in the sun. If all goes to plan it should be a new car time soon, so I'll aim to be back in another week or so with a farewell wash video of the Rebel Blue T5, so stay tuned for that and in the meantime feel free to evoke some commentary.